Hello everyone and welcome back. This is gonna be a Bobby Dazzler of a screencast, I hope. It's on division, it's on the bus stop method. It's easy peasy lemon squeezy. The biggest thing about this is division is something that some people either struggle with or find easy. It depends on how our brains work. So we can be really good at maths but struggle with division. So this is a top tip to help you with that. If you struggle with division before, it will be a thing of the past, hopefully after you've watched the screencast. It takes a little bit more work than some people are used to doing when it comes to division. But trust me, if you do it, it's well worth the extra time and effort that you put in place. So what is the bus stop method? It's an easy way to do division. It's called the bus stop method very, very simply because it looks like a bus stop. So we've got a bus stop here. Over here we've got seats in there and it's, it's going over. And that's exactly like, have a shelter going over. It's exactly like what we see when we have the bus stop method. So here's an example, 36 divided by 6. Some years be thinking this is easy. Well, we're just going through the process. So all we do is we put 36. I'll get to that in a minute. We put 36 inside the bus stop and we put 6 outside the bus stop. And what we're going to do is down the right hand side, we're going to draw out the six times table. This is going to help us when we go through our questions. Now, again, some of we sit in there thinking, I don't need to do that. It's, it's personal choice. But if you do struggle with division, I highly recommend you writing the six times table out. And especially when we get to the next, because uh, this is a screencast of three series of three. So as we go through, you rely on this times table more and more and more. But let's just go through now how we actually do it. So what we do is we go, basically we say, how many sixes go into three? Now, three is, is smaller than six, so there are none. So what we do is basically we're looking at the times table and we're saying, what is the most appropriate answer for this? If I said six times one, I have six, it's over three. And when we're dividing, we're not, we can't do that. So I can say six times zero is zero. And how many remainders do we have? We have three because we're three off. Our answer is zero, so we're three off, aren't we? So therefore, what we do is we take that across and we make the new question, how many sixes go into 36? And if we look down our times table, we can see that 6 times 6 is 36. So we just put 6 in there. We have no remainders left, so therefore we can finish the question. And it really is as simple as that. If we write our 6 times table, we'll very quickly get there. So let's give the next one a go, and then I'm going to throw it over to you guys and girls to do one yourselves. So we put 144 inside the bus stop. We put 4 outside the bus stop and we say how many fours go into one they don't one's too small so what we do is we go four times zero equals zero and we have one remainder don't we so we put the remainder there and then we look and we say okay how many fours go into 14 i look down my list and i can see that three equals 12 four equals 16 so i've got to take the lower one so i'm going to say three and how many remainders are there well i've got 12 I need 14, so I've got two remainders. So I put that across there. And then I look and say, how many fours go into 24? I look down my list, I can see six fours go into 24, so we put it in there. Now you're going to fall into one of two camps. Camp number one is you don't struggle with, uh, well, probably three, three camps actually. Let's make it three camps. Camp one is you don't struggle with uh division you can crack on you can go and do the quiz you, you you know you don't need to worry about it camp two is you do struggle with division and you're going to write down these times tables down here and you're going to be really successful or there's the third camp the camp that no one wants to be part of which is you struggle with division you can't be bothered to write your times table and you consistently get it wrong please don't be in that camp let's go over let's do it now i'm going to draw out for you the question and I'm even going to do the times table for you. you don't even need to write this down 
or you can write it down quickly. Give this question a go on your own. Come back and see if you've got it right. I'll even put it into the uh, bus stop for you. Give it a go. Come back and see if you got it right. So hopefully you had some time to do that now. So how many fives go into two? They don't, do they? Look, one, one times five is five, so we've gone over. So we need to say zero. Five times zero is zero. And how many remainders do we have? Well, we've got zero and we need to get to two. So we've got a two remainder. So now how many fives go into 26? If I look down my list, I've got five fives equals 25, but I've got a remainder of one. So I put that across there. Now, how many fives go into 15? I look and I can see three. So you might notice on all the examples today, we have no remainders at the end. So it's a straight number. Our answer would be 53 on that one. And it is now time for the quiz, everyone. So what I would like you to do is if you've done well, move on to the quiz. If you haven't done well, go back, do the video until you feel comfortable, watch it a few times, uh, and then go and do the quiz questions. But if you do feel comfortable, I'm sure you'll be absolutely fine going through. And remember, the most important thing is if you do struggle a little bit, write that times table. It will literally change your division life. Pause the video, give it a go, come back and see if you've got it right. Okay, everyone, so now it's time to go through the answers. Here we go. And our answer is 64, 21, and 65. You can see all my working there. So fingers crossed you've got them all correct, and I'm sure you have. Now, if you have done them all, well, this is a great opportunity to write a great revision card. I'd even just pick those quiz questions as your questions and then your answers on the reverse side. Remember, I always say this, don't I? Do something today that your future self is going to thank you for. Do a great revision card. Do some extra questions because in the future you'll remember this more and you'll be away. Remember, this is a series of three, so I look forward to seeing you back for the other two. But until next time, it's been a pleasure helping you with your maths today. Have a great day or evening.